Ever wondered where that brown paper you use daily comes from? Well, let's dive into its fascinating history. Brown paper, also known as craft paper, traces its roots back to the ancient world. It was initially used by civilizations like the Egyptians, who utilized papyrus, a form of early paper, for writing and recording. However, the modern version of brown paper that we know and love today has its origins in the mid-19th century. With the advent of the Industrial Revolution, paper production took a significant leap forward. This was a time when people started to explore different types of paper for various uses. Brown paper, with its strength and durability, quickly became a popular choice. Yes, from wrapping parcels to crafting art, brown paper has evolved and found its place in our lives. So, the next time you hold a piece of brown paper, remember, it's not just paper, it's a piece of history. Now that we've learned about the origin of brown paper, you might be curious about how it's actually made. The process of making brown paper starts in the forest with the cutting of trees. The heart of the journey begins in the forest, where trees are chosen and cut down. Different types of trees are used for different types of paper, but for brown paper, we typically use softwoods like pine, fir, and spruce. These trees are preferred because they contain long fibers, which will ultimately give our brown paper its strength. Once the trees are cut down, they're transported to the paper mill. The journey isn't always a simple one. Depending on the location of the forest, the logs might be transported by truck, train, or even by river. Each log's journey is a testament to the lengths we go to bring you the humble brown paper. When the logs arrive at the paper mill, they're not exactly ready to become paper. They're still logs after all. So the next step is to turn those logs into pulp, which is a process known as pulping. The pulping process is quite fascinating. The logs are first stripped of their bark and then chopped into small chips. These chips are then cooked in a chemical solution at high pressure. This cooking process breaks down the lignin, which is the natural glue holding the wood fibers together. Once the lignin is removed, what we're left with is a wet, mushy substance known as pulp. But we're not done yet. The pulp still contains tiny bits of lignin and other impurities, so it's washed and bleached to remove these. The result is a clean white pulp, ready to be transformed into brown paper. It's quite a journey, isn't it? From the forest to the paper mill, from logs to pulp. Every step of the way, the process is carefully controlled to ensure the highest quality product. The pulp is the foundation of our brown paper, and without it, there would be no paper at all. With the pulp ready, we are now set to move to the next stage of brown paper production. Transforming pulp into paper requires a mixture of technology, heat, and chemicals. This isn't just a simple matter of drying out the pulp. Oh no, it's a carefully calibrated process that has been perfected over centuries. So, let's dive straight into it. Firstly, the wet pulp, which is about 99% water, is pumped onto a moving wire mesh conveyor belt. This conveyor, often referred to as a forming fabric, allows the water to drain away from the pulp. This draining process is crucial in forming a mat of randomly oriented fibers. Next, the fibrous mat goes through a pressing process. It's squeezed between rollers to remove as much water as possible. This is a critical step, as the pressure applied can affect the density and smoothness of the paper. Too much pressure, and you'll end up with a paper that's too thin and brittle, too little, and the paper will be too thick and rough. After it's been pressed, the mat is still quite damp, holding about 60% water. So, it's time to crank up the heat. The mat is passed through large heated cylinders known as dryers. These dryers evaporate the remaining water, leaving us with a continuous sheet of paper. But we're not done yet. The paper then goes through a calendaring process. It's passed through a series of hard pressure rollers. This process smoothens and finishes the paper, giving it that familiar texture we all know and love. The quality of the final product, the brown paper, is determined by each of these steps, the type of pulp, the pressure applied, the temperature of the drying, the calendaring, all are crucial in creating paper with the right thickness, texture, and strength, and voila, the brown paper is made, but what happens next? After the paper is formed, it's not ready for use just yet. There's still a journey to be made before it can proudly bear the title of brown paper. Let's delve into the fascinating world of finishing touches that transform a simple sheet of paper into a versatile, market-ready product. The first step in the finishing process is sizing. This step ensures that the paper has the right level of absorbency. A size press applies a solution that makes the paper more resistant to water and other liquids. It's a bit like giving the paper its own invisible raincoat. Once the sizing is complete, the paper moves on to the calendaring process. 
This stage involves passing the paper through sets of heated rollers. It's kind of like ironing your clothes making sure the paper is smooth and wrinkle-free. The more passes through the calendaring rollers, the smoother and glossier the paper becomes. But for brown paper we want to maintain some of that natural rustic texture, so it doesn't go through as many rounds of calendaring as other types of paper. Next up is the cutting stage. Large rolls of paper are sliced into smaller rolls or sheets depending on what they'll be used for. It's a careful process, ensuring each piece of paper is the perfect size for its intended purpose. Then comes the packaging. This is the final step before the paper hits the market. Rolls or sheets of brown paper are packaged and labeled, ready to be shipped off to stores around the world. And voila! From a humble tree in the forest, to a roll of brown paper in a factory, it's been quite the journey. Through each step of the process, the paper has been cared for and prepared to make sure it's ready for whatever job it's needed for. This is the magic of manufacturing. It's not just about making things, it's about transforming raw materials into products that we use every day. It's about the attention to detail, the care and precision that goes into every step. Now our brown paper is ready for its many uses. And that, folks, is the story of how brown paper is made. From forest to factory and then onto your desk, brown paper has quite the tale to tell. Brown paper is more than just a packaging material. Indeed, it's a versatile tool used in a variety of ways across various sectors. Let's start with the most common use, packaging. Brown paper is the unsung hero of the shipping world. It's light, flexible, and strong, making it perfect for wrapping parcels of all shapes and sizes. Whether it's a book from your favorite online retailer or a gift from a loved one, brown paper is often the first layer of protection. But the uses of brown paper extend beyond packaging. It's also a popular choice in the world of arts and crafts. Its natural rustic appeal makes it an excellent canvas for artistic creations. From homemade greeting cards to scrapbooking, brown paper adds a touch of warmth and nostalgia. Ever thought about using brown paper in the kitchen? Surprisingly, it's quite handy when it comes to baking. When you're baking cookies or roasting vegetables, a sheet of brown paper can be used to line your baking tray. It's not only easy to use but also makes cleanup a breeze. Now, let's talk about the environment. In an age where sustainability is a growing concern, brown paper stands out as an eco-friendly choice. It's recyclable, compostable, and produced from a renewable resource. This means that when you're using brown paper, you're not just choosing a versatile material, you're also making a choice that's good for the planet. Let's not forget about its use in education. From making paper mache in art class to covering textbooks, brown paper is a staple in many classrooms around the world. It's not just for practical purposes, but it also encourages creativity and provides a platform for learning. So the next time you come across a piece of brown paper, remember, it's not just a simple sheet of paper. It's a tool that's vital in our daily lives, with countless uses and benefits. From the forest to your hands, the brown paper has a fascinating journey and a multitude of uses. So there you have it, the journey of brown paper. It all starts with a simple piece of wood. This is then transformed into pulp through a process of grinding and heating. That pulp then cleaned and bleached, removing impurities and giving it that classic brown color we all recognize. Once the pulp is, it's pressed and dried to form sheets of paper. These sheets are then rolled and cut into the various sizes we use every day. And remember, brown paper isn't just for wrapping presents. It's used in a variety of ways, from packaging materials to craft projects, and even in the food industry. So whether you're unwrapping a package, creating a masterpiece, or enjoying a sandwich wrapped in brown paper, take a moment to appreciate the journey this humble material has made. Next time you use brown paper, remember the journey it took to get to you. Thanks for joining us on this exploration of the life of brown paper. Don't forget to subscribe for more interesting facts.